Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with an awesome new knife consult for you on the Frank Fisher Fury. Now, I've already made a video uh, a while back on the Frame Lock Frank Fisher Fury. That's a lot of F's right there. This is the Bolster Lock version, and this is my newest acquisition to my custom collection. Um, I should give you a little bit of a backstory. I have kind of been away for a couple of months from making videos, and in that time, uh, I've had quite a number of developments with my custom knife collection. Uh, a gentleman from Singapore reached out to me and said, what if you sold your whole collection and started from new? And I said, that's an interesting thought. And he asked me the price of my collection and I gave him a number and he paid it and he bought all of my custom knives. For, so for the last couple of months, I actually haven't had any custom knives to talk about. And so I'm finally able to sit down with a brand new grail piece and show it to you guys. Now, this is special to me because I got into custom knives more or less because of the Frank Fisher battle. I watched a video on the Jim Skelton uh, channel and it absolutely captivated me. And so uh, I've had a couple of knives direct from Frank over the years after uh, de developing a bit of a relationship. This time he reached out to me. He said, hey, I heard that you sold your whole collection. Would you be interested in having uh, one of my knives again in your collection? I said, absolutely, let's work on an Ultimate Fury. And this is it right here, the Ultimate Fury. So right off the bat, we'll give you a quick overview here. There is a Chad Nichols XHP Core Sanmai blade, some three alloy Mokutai on the pivot collar with four alloy Zerkutai on the scales, the inlay, the backspacer, and the clip. So we're gonna go ahead and get into this. Uh, I wanted to show you the knife a bit before I get my hands all over it. One of the unfortunate side effects of having this beautiful Zerkutai material is that it does change its color a little bit as I get my finger oils on the scales. So let's go ahead and take a look at this beautiful, beautiful Frank Fisher Fury. That double recurve blade is the thing that got me into custom knives to begin with. Uh, some people don't like it. Some people think it looks a little bit silly, but for that exact reason, I like it. It's a bit like the angles on a Lamborghini. It's like the Countach that you hang on your wall. It looks a bit ridiculous, uh, but it really captures your imagination. So let's go ahead and get some vital signs on the Fury. This is the same size as the previous Fury that I had before. It's got about a 3.1 inch cutting length, about a 3.2 inch blade maybe overall. Uh, overall length, you're looking at about 7.3, 7.4 inches. The uh, handle length is coming in right at four inches with an effective grip area somewhere in the 3.3 inch range right there. So it's a little bit on the smaller side, which is a little bit unusual for me, but I've been learning to love these smaller size knives because they're just a little bit easier to carry, a little bit less intimidating. Here's a pretty large knife, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 for a size comparison. This is the 10V model right here. You can see that the uh, Fury comes in considerably smaller than that. I actually don't have another knife, uh, regular knife to show you, but I will show you this 3.3 inch Gareth Bull Shamwari right here. This is gonna have its own video uh, on my channel. This one is another custom build with this green carbon fiber. But at 3.3 inches, this is not a huge blade and you can see that the Fury is a little bit smaller. Uh, I actually am fortunate enough to have this little three inch Shamwari right here. So. You can see that the Fury slots right in between the 3.3 and the 3.0 inch model right there. So it's a nice little EDC size. Not that this knife will be carried very much and I think it's important to understand from the beginning that some things in a collection are not things that will be used heavily. I think it's important for us to accept as custom knife collectors that some knives are not intended to be used heavily. A bit like taking your Lamborghini off-road, you want to drive it carefully and use it under fairly uh, soft and regular conditions uh, so that you don't damage it and things like that. And this is one of those types of knives. Obviously, it is a showstopper. It is an attention grabber. So let's go ahead and break it down anatomically and understand a little bit about why this is so crazy. 
Up front, as I mentioned, is the Fisher double recurve blade shape. This blade shape has captured my attention and now it's really captured my interest because it actually works extremely well uh, in everyday cutting tasks. There is an excellent sharp tip. This recurved area right here is impossibly sharp. Uh, I've really only used this to open some letters and poke a couple of holes in some very light uh, plastic wrap. Uh, but it works beautifully for both of those things. The edge came unbelievably sharp. He actually takes his edges up to an almost mirror finish. Incredibly, incredibly sharp. This thing is ground incredibly thin behind the edge, particularly towards this tanto tip right here. Yes, not only is this a double recurve, it is a modified Tanto style blade. He also offers these knives with a straight edge right here rather than a recurve. He, he calls that the Tanto model uh, instead of doing the double recurve, but I like the recurve. Uh, if I ever need it sharpened, obviously I would send it to a professional, but uh, that's beside the point. The other recurved surface right here is also very, very sharp uh, and works beautifully. Having these two tips on this blade right here make it absolutely functional. The real attention grabber on this blade is obviously the steel itself. This is Chad Nichols Low Layer XHP Core Sanmai. So Sanmai steel being the type of steel that has a cutting steel in the core. Uh, you can see it running down the spine of the blade here. There is a core steel. In this, in this case, it's CTS XHP. Uh, and then this is stainless performance Damascus. So it is two other steels clad in what he calls the boomerang pattern uh, on the uh, blade right there, on the sides of the blade. So they clad that core with a patterned steel. Uh, layered two other steels and they make this beautiful design. When you grind the blade out it exposes the core and it exposes all those layers. And He's done a beautiful job of etching and then buffing this so uh, it has a beautiful sheen to it. It does not have that rough texture that you feel sometimes with a newly etched uh, knife blade. He did buff it afterwards so it's actually quite smooth. I don't really like the uh, gritty sort of etched feeling on blades. It actually diminishes cutting performance. Uh, so I asked him to tr take it to the buffer and see what it would do. And this is really smooth to the touch. It is not rough to the touch at all. And I really, really like that. You can tell that by the way that it catches the light. It really shines through all those layers. And if you get up really close, you can actually see all three layers of the alloys. Uh, I wish that I knew what they were off the top of my head. He does not uh, openly publish what it is, but it's been written before. These are all high-performance steels, good cutting steels. But you can see sort of uh, in this area that there is a dark line, there is a gray line, and then there is a bright silver line. Uh, and so you can see all three of the alloys coming through in the layers there. That's very, very cool. I appreciate that this is a perfectly centered core. One of the risks of asking a knife maker to make you a knife out of Sanmai is that uh, a lot of the Sanmai steels, as you see here, have a bit of irregular cores. They're not exactly straight. Uh, Mike Norris has recently come up with a solution to this and his cores are perfectly straight. I have to say I don't really like that look either because it's almost too straight, but it is functional. Uh, this is a perfectly centered core though. I, I asked him, I said, I really have to have that core centered. I'm so OCD about it. Please make it centered. And he did a perfect job. Uh, I love how it tapers down like a waterfall towards the back of the grind. The way that he grinds the blade, he leaves the heel uh, in, a, in a bit of an artistic fashion right, th right there. It allows for the layers of the Damascus cladding to kind of come down and form a beautiful edge right there. Very, very cool. So uh, you've probably noticed, uh, we'll go ahead and move back to the pivot. This is another showstopper feature on this knife. Frank Fisher is known for his beautiful pivot designs, and this is his latest and greatest iteration. Uh, his pivot is called the 10-pointed star pivot. You should go back and watch a number of my previous videos with Frank Fisher knives to see what the standard pivot looks like. Again, I'm sorry I don't have one because they sold. Uh, but this one, as you can see, has the slight modification. Let's see if my camera will focus. 
uh, on this. It uh, is largely the same pivot except that now he's milled some extra lines, uh, little ray bursts around the inner layer of that pivot. Absolutely mesmerizing. I can stare at this for hours. It's like a fine watchmaker's piece. Around the pivot, as I mentioned at the beginning, is high contrast three alloy Chad Nichols uh, Moku tie. That is uh, three layers of titanium uh, that are forge welded, just like the Damascus steel. So he produced the Damascus and the titanium alloys on this. Uh, the uh, pivot itself, the metal around and the inside that's all milled here and beautiful, uh, this is all done by hand. Uh, as well uh, as this is a steel pivot. This is not something I knew, and this is something that uh, new Fisher owners should be aware of. That middle section is made of steel. Uh, the inner section, the inlay, is zircutai. You can see the layers of zirconium and titanium, just like you can on the scales over here. So he inlays that, and it's uh, nude and clean, uh, and then he... Uh, flame anodizes the zircutai. In the process of flame anodizing the zircutai to get the blue colors, the pivots themselves, the steel pivots become blued uh, or colored. And these you can see, this one took a nice bronze, almost purple, little hints of purple on that side. This one took an even darker bronze with a bit more of the purple coloration. On this side it's absolutely beautiful. Sometimes he gets a deep dark blue as well. I like the contrast on this. It sets it apart, uh, the steel part from the titanium part, so it's not just all blues and purples. I really, really like that. I could stare at that pivot for days. On the inside, we're running on ball bearings. Very smooth action, very quick deployment. Perfect, perfect detent. This is a bolster lock. Uh, I don't think I mentioned that at the beginning, so I've done a video on the frame lock. This is what we would call the bolster lock because it has the scales and the lock is technically part of the bolster, uh, as you would call it, so we call that a bolster lock. So very, very cool. The action is great. The lockup is very early. In the typical Frank Fisher fashion, the uh, detent ball has been shaved flat for a very smooth action. The detent track has been masked uh, during the etching process, so it runs on smooth steel, so that's very, very nice. Let's go ahead and move back to the handles. I want to make sure that we have a perfect visualization here on these scales. So I need to wipe off any finger oils that I've accumulated during the video here so that you guys can get a full appreciation of what's going on here. When Frank asked the spec that I wanted, uh, I mentioned that I wanted Zerkutai scales. This was originally going to have an intrepid Damascus blade, but when he told me that he had boomerang Zerkutai and boomerang Sanmai, uh, I had to go for it because I really like matching patterns. Uh, it's been a hobby, uh, a habit of mine, something I've been going for with a lot of knives, including that Miura, including the uh, Warbird that I had that had very similar dark tie and Thor Damacor. If you actually close this blade a little bit, you'll notice that the pattern peeks through, the boomerang pattern peeks through uh, on the flats of the blade there. <clears throat> so what he's done is actually this is a boomerang pattern in this orientation, and this is a boomerang pattern in that one. So it's a 90 degree rotated uh, pattern, but they're both boomerang, and that's really cool to me. And I feel like they flow very well together, that the, the flow of this Zerkutai flows out onto the blade. It's almost like liquid metal melting onto the blade. It's very cool. I like that look a lot. But more about these scales and the frame. We have a black ceramic coated frame. This is the way I like to have them from Frank. I really like this uh, ceramic coating. This is KG nano ceramic coating. Uh, very high durability. They use it on machine guns in the military. Super high quality durable coating uh, that protects the frame. Got that all around. Uh, and then the Zerkutai scale. So this is three alloys of titanium and zirconium. So if you take a look here, uh, he's contoured these scales heavily, <clears throat> and you can see the different layers of the materials. Each of the different alloys of titanium, when you heat anodize it, comes out with a slightly different hue of blue or purple or light blue. You can see little bright spots of very light blue, almost turquoise, transitioning into uh, true blue and a dark blue, and then there's even purples 
that are poking through. You can see a little bit of the purples here. Even the clip is a hidden hardware clip, also made of the same four alloy Zerkutai. One of the things I love about the bolster lock and what makes this knife so impressive, you may not have even noticed this yet, but there is no hardware to be seen on this knife. Take a look at this knife, even <clears throat> on the back. All you see is the beautiful customized pivot, and it seems that he's assembled this knife by some sort of dark magic. It is just held together very solidly, but you see none of the hardware at all. It is a beautiful, beautiful knife, and it is extremely subtle how he hides everything uh, to make this just that extra layer of quality. Uh, how does it feel in the hand? It feels great. It fits my very large hand. I wear a size 8 sterile glove. It fits my hand like a glove. Even though it's a bit of a smaller knife, I've always liked the Fury because it's exactly the right size. I love how my finger falls into this choil here and my hand naturally grips this. There's a nice curvature to the handle so that it fits the hand very well. <clears throat> I should mention that this has a Zerkutai backspacer too. You can see this is a end cut now so you can see what this material looks like in cross section. Uh, you can see the layers, the thick layers of zirconium and the different layering of the titaniums. This actually gives you a bit more of the anatomical breakdown here of the composition where you see how those layers of titanium are layered uh, along with the zirconium and this wraps around all the way over here. Really, really gorgeous. Now, uh, it is a bit of a raised backspacer. You do not feel that when it's in the hand. It is not uncomfortable. It is not sharp at all. It, it Don't even notice it. You don't even feel it. It's sitting right in the meat of your hand so you really don't feel it at all. Uh, as I mentioned, it has great ergonomics and I really enjoy that. It's This particular build <clears throat> is a little bit on the heavier side. I didn't weigh this at the beginning of the video, but this one is coming in at 5.87 ounces. With all this zirconium in this Zerkutai, it's a very, very heavy knife. And so it's a little bit of a problem to carry in my scrubs. But again, as I mentioned before, this is going to be more of a showpiece. This is really the top of my collection and maybe the greatest knife that I've ever had. Uh, really, it's quite perfect. I couldn't be more honored or humbled to be picking this up. A grail piece from my grail maker uh, where he asked to build a knife for me. So really and truly, this is a special piece to me and I'm so thankful to have it. Let me know what you guys think of the Frank Fisher Bolster Lock Fury. Go ahead and click like and subscribe in the video uh, down below and the links down below. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching. As always, this is Dr. Frunky saying take care.